Uh, welcome back to your number one breakfast show, uh, News Hub. And we have a big discussion this morning. It is the International Day for the Eradication, eradication of Poverty. This year's theme is Dignity for All uh, in Practice, the commitments we make together for social justice, peace, and the planet. The Country Director for Action Aid Nigeria is with us, uh, NOB. It's always a pleasure to have NOB talk with us uh, on these issues, uh, especially around governance. And today, as we observe the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, it would be great to see what uh, NGOs are doing and how they are also, together with the media, putting the focus on the state actors to make sure that we can have this goal happen. Uh, NLB, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. And um, Nigeria is a major feature in today's discussion. I mean, on all of the parameters and indices, uh, we haven't fared too well. In fact, whether it's with the local Bureau of Statistics that puts out the numbers or it's with the international body, say, for example, uh, where we have the Human Development Index, uh, we measured really low on many of the parameters that have defined us uh, as a nation where nearly half of its population live now in multidimensional uh, poverty. So let's get your opening uh, on today's observance. Okay. Um, the issue of dignity, the theme is dignity in all you know, in, 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 uh, dignity in all, in terms of the practice. Dignity for all. Dignity for all in practice is an umbrella theme for the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty for 2022, 2023, you know, uh, 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 period. The dignity of uh, human beings is not only a fundamental human rights in itself, but constitutes the basis of all other fundamental rights. Therefore, dignity is not uh, an abstract concept. It belongs to each and everyone. Today, many people living in persistent poverty, you know, experience their dignity being denied and also, you know, disrespected. How much, what can you really do when you have no money? You have to look at the essence of what is the meaning of poverty itself? The observance of the International Day for Eradication of Poverty can be traced back to the 17th of October, 1987. On that day, over 100,000 you know, people gathered at the Trocadero uh, you know, uh, venue in Paris, where the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was also signed in 1948 you know, in the, the, to honor the victims of extreme poverty, violence, and hunger. They proclaim that poverty is a violation of human rights and affirmed, you know, the need to come together to ensure that these rights are met. This is as far back as 1987. And so when you look at where we now are, you begin to wonder and also find, you know, want to find out what has become the difference. What's the difference today to that time and where Nigeria was at the time? And where Nigeria was at the time? And where Nigeria was at the time? So this, year's, uh, this year marks the 35th anniversary of the World Day, of the, uh, of the World Day to overcome extreme poverty, but also the 30th, 30th anniversary of the International Day for Extreme Poverty you know, for the eradication of poverty. This day also honors the millions of people who are suffering from poverty and their daily, you know, uh, 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 courage, and also recognizes the essence for global solidarity and shared responsibility, which we hold, you know, to eradicate poverty and, and combat all forms of discrimination against those who are living in poverty. And making all these, uh, by putting all these backgrounds so that we can have place the issues of poverty in a better context. What is the meaning itself when you are looking at the meaning of poverty? Poverty, you know, is a state of being in which a person lacks income and also to, you know, real, uh, reliably 
meet your own um, basic personal needs, such as food, shelter, and clothing. Poverty exists in every country in the world, though it is more, you know, pressing, uh, uh, more pressing in terms of uh, looking at the countries, more, some other countries more than the others. The poverty rate in the number of people, you know, usually in a given demography, you look at the groups of people whose income falls below the poverty line. You know, poverty is not solely an economic issue, but rather a multidimensional phenomenon that encomp encompasses a lack of both income and the basic cap capabilities to live a life in dignity. There are some facts and figures, and I just want to give this briefly. Um, we have a study by World Bank and also, you know, the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, which talks about uh, the better future for Nigeria. You know, uh, this, is, uh, this was a, a publication, 2022 Nigerian Poverty Assessment. And this one, the assessment by the World Bank has said that, uh, you know, uh, Nigerian, that is projected that Nigerians about 95.1 million you know, will be, you know, uh, we fall below the poverty line in 2022. We're in 2022, almost at the end now, so that can tell you where we are. And this figure, you know, about 89.0%, you know, in 2020, which means we are now hitting 91, you know, million. And this is statistics, so you can look at where we are. And so is a progression in terms of, uh, you know, 2020, you have about 42%. Yes. And then now, uh, uh, 2020, you have 42.0 percent, and now we have 42.6 you know, percent. Yes. According to this, Nigeria ranks uh, 37 out of 172, you know, countries. As many as uh, four Nigerians, four in every Nigerian, live below the poverty line. And so you can go on with statistics to show whatever you know uh, we, we are pulling out. What are the causes of this poverty that we are looking at? You know, we need to look at the issue of the sluggish growth in terms of the growth, growth rate, you know, in our economy. And we are also looking at, uh, looking at the low human capital, which uh, a, a lot of people, you are looking at weakness in the labor market. You are looking at also corruption, issues of corruption, very, very heavy. And then we are going into, right, also you Amen. have to look at uh, COVID-19 as well. Yes. And then how do we tackle... What, what, one, one second there, what, one second. You, you just reeled out um, some very fantastic statistics there uh, that um, it's important that uh, Nigerians uh, get to know this. And just maybe the government is not even aware of this dominant statistics. It's also important that we keep bringing it to their faces. Uh, let's begin, let everyone begin to understand how bad uh, things really are uh, in our country in terms of um, eradicating poverty. This government uh, uh, did pride itself as one government that wants to fight uh, poverty. We are aware uh, government talked about providing 100 million jobs in the next 10 years. Uh, but here we are, rather than... Um, <laughs> Uh, rather than um, falling off the poverty line, we seem to be falling deeper into the poverty uh, radius. Uh, and, uh, what do you think? What do you think we should begin to do as a people, uh, as a government? What should we begin to do as a short, medium, and long-term approach to dealing with the issues around the poverty? And, uh, I, I, I think there's so many things that we need to look at. The government cannot say that they are not aware of the statistics because National Bureau of Statistics is a government institution. And why is the, is the World Bank in Nigeria? The World Bank is in Nigeria because the Nigerian government invited them. And so all the researches are shared by the government. And so we have always followed the calculations of the National Bureau of Statistics because, you know, as a civil society organization, sometimes when you quote um, some... Uh, statistics, they will tell you, you know, where are you getting that from? And so we just tread along the line to look at what is the government saying? What is the statistics of the government saying? So that we can start it from there. And so um, for Action Aid Nigeria, we have been, you know, our total work is on poverty eradication because we believe that poverty can be eradicated. 
We also believe that, you know, given the right choices, the right redistribution of wealth, you know, uh, things that is available to the country, there should be proper things should be done, given the right leadership and also management of our resources, because Nigeria is heavily blessed by both human and, and material resources. How is the management of that going on? We have a lot of corruption in Nigeria. And when you do that, corruption denies a lot of people the resources that they need to go. We are talking of poverty today. You look at the convergence. One major area is education. What are we doing with our education? Look at our children being at home for oh, about eight months. And if, within this particular administration, they, if you want to look at history, we'll roll out the figures for you. How many months have children been at home? How many academic years have we lost? And then you look at the political class who also send their children out of the country to go and read and then come back or stay out there. You look at the volume of population that are escaping from this country because of the lack of attention to issues of education, which is the greatest of any nation's investment for its human capital. Because when you invest in people, when you send your children, give them scholarships as a nation, for them to get educated and come back to your economy. You are equipping your economy. You are developing the workforce for your economy. So you are not doing them a favor. So I think those are things that we need to do. Ours is social justice to eradicating poverty. Our current strategy in Action Aid is social justice to eradicating poverty. If you want to pull it out, we are not employed at the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria. We have a lot of workforce. We, have, we are reeling out millions of young people from the NYC camp every year. How do you consume that population? There are no industries working. Our electricity supply, or is it the power sector? You see, see and I'm linking this. I said there is a convergence. You are looking at you know, an area where we talked about the power sector. The money that was voted for the power sector, where is it today? If you want to pull that. The government, the government came, promised to bring power for us, you know, made us all his promises. Where is the money for the power sector? Are people asking questions? Where is that money? You are looking at also flood. Now, natural, even natural disaster, there are some conversions. We have more than eight, you know, states now underwater. And that is leading to further poverty. This one is natural disaster. This is the climate change that is causing all of this. But you once remember that there was an ecology fund. The ecology fund was meant to drain the river Niger and the river Benue, you know, so that it can suck in more water, and then you can even introduce more water life, you know, economic act increase economic activities around the water bodies, you know, of Nigeria. But where are we today? The ecology fund was sucked. Where is the money? The government of the day then took the money. What have they done with it? And then we have a lot of security. Insecurity is going on in this country where people no longer can go to their farms. They are driven from their homes, and so they have become IDPs. Those are issues that further increases. And are we taking the issue of security seriously? One of the heads of states of Nigeria once said that if an insecurity issue goes beyond 48 hours, the government of the day knows about it. And the day they say it will stop, it will stop. And so we should not politicize any of these areas that I have mentioned. If you politicize them, definitely it will hurt you in the end. And so I think there is a lot of work that we can do. One of the ways we also went further, the issue of social protection. Uh, actually, I remember when I was uh, the um, governance team leader. Uh, I think this was around 2008. I, I led a team to uh, Brazil to study the Abosa Familia. Right. And that is how Brazil lifted up you know, uh, many from poverty. So we were happy because we searched for alternatives. We want to talk to the government, but we want to be guided by evidence. And so when we went and came back, the government of the day then, nobody listened to us. So we are indeed happy that uh, at least President Mohamed Buhari was able to bring in the National Social Investment Program of which action it was also called to provide some you know, technical assistance in terms of with the civil society organizations 
to provide third party you know, um, uh, monitoring. Uh, we did the supervision, we gave a feedback. So there is a lot that can be done. They started with the cash transfer. There is uh, so many, you know, uh, school feeding program and a couple of other things that they were able to do. But again, the human element, the issue of corruption cropped in. Excellent. The president may want this to be done, but the humans, what uh, we found some corrupt elements in it, and so the quality of our citizenship also needs to be addressed. Excellent. How and, and are we standing and upright for Nigeria? And as we are pointing fingers, right. each and every one of us will need to look at ourselves uh -huh. and be a contributor, right. uh, uh, not a violator. And Excellent. because at each point, Excellent. all of these and issues will converge. Excellent. And, and, and I can imagine that um, in, in the recommendations of uh, Action Aid, for example, uh, into what you think can be done. In, in curbing corruption because it's a major uh, uh, contributor to uh, our, uh, abysmal rankings, uh, human development index, and all of those um, uh, things that deal with governance. Uh, this will help in no small measure. But uh, you, you've tried to disaggregate the different factors that have put us uh, the lower rungs of uh, the poverty uh, index. And I'm wondering, uh, if you take a healthcare, healthcare for example, and you look at um, the horrendous numbers on malnutrition in many parts of the country, uh, link it up with um, uh, poor access to health care. We don't even have health insurance, even though the Health Insurance Act uh, wants to make it mandatory for every Nigerian to have a health insurance cover um, with, uh, with its passage. And look at Nigeria's life expectancy, 52 for male, 53 for uh, female, one of the worst in the world. What about health care and access to health care for Nigerians? as an uh, issue for eradication of po poverty? You see, um, for some time, I, w I went into public health for about 10 years, you know, and I remember that very well. You know, we have maternal mortality like no other. We are among the last five in the world for maternal mortality and also, you know, uh, child mortality. And uh, how do you live a life of dignity, ensuring some of the things that we have talked about? A lot of unemployment. A husband will have a job today, tomorrow he doesn't have a job. And they, you know, maybe the wife doesn't have a job. And then the wife is pregnant and is going to have a baby. Or maybe the money that they take home is not much. Or maybe, um, like in many states, that uh, people are not paid for eight months or thereabout or nine months of pay, and the wife is going to have a baby, and then you go to the hospital. One is the, the lackadaisical you know, uh, uh, confrontations that you get to meet there, and then maybe uh, labor is challenged. Maybe you are having a protracted labor and so on, and then you need a CS, and you don't have the money. Where is the life of dignity for both the man and even the woman? And for the woman, it becomes a life-threatening thing, and that's why we're losing so many. And many of the private hospitals, of course, will not do uh, CS unless you deposit money and you find somebody roaming a woman between one hospital and the other. And then life goes. And you say, where is the claim? So the issue of gender responsive public service is such, an, it's such a, a way that we need to concentrate. If you look at the hospital in Abuja, the National Hospital in Abuja was built for women and children. By then, you know, raised by uh, Mrs. Abacha, Mariam Abacha, you know, it was built for women and children. But that's where that seems to be the the best hospital, also, you know, uh, and that's where the big people and everybody who is not able to fly abroad, that's where they're going to. So, in the life of so many administrations later, how many hospitals have you built? At what what attention have you given? It should not be a punishment for a Nigerian woman to be pregnant. Because continuing the production of, the, of, of, of uh, uh, children, of human beings, is one of the duties that they have. And that is continuing your population and continuing the population for the workforce of this country. In many other countries, you know, you will even be begged to have children. Many people, they have an aging population. But luckily in Nigeria, we do not have that. And so we need to look at the rights of women because they are having, having to have uh, children, then you are punishing them. 
and they, they don't have this should be something that should be free Medicare yeah. you know for women and children yeah. for the men how many times do they use the hospitals and so when there are no hospitals who are you denying their rights and so, so I think this is an area that is an emergency they should even declare that sector a, a, an emergency because what we are having today there is a lot of there is a lot that women are going through and for the for the health sector we are far away in terms of the you know um, uh, social insurance even the insurance itself the, that area is challenged yeah. when you go to the hospital and they say are you HMO or are you which one you know you are discriminated against you know not given the preference that you should be given as if you are treated as a second-class citizen you know, are you these know, the ways? Yeah, you know, or and, is and it then, that the, the, the hospitals are not getting the money, their money on time? Or yeah. what is happening? So maybe there is need for, for you know, the system to be relooked at. Fantastic, and I, I think it's a good way to anchor the show. But let, let it be also be said that, um, indeed, um, quite a number of sectors in Nigeria needs to be declared um, instead of emergency. Uh, even the education sector needs yeah. um, some declaration of an emergency, instead of emergency, the health sector. Uh, the power sector, oh, yes, the economy. Yes. I agree. Uh, let's look at what's happening within the 33 states in terms of flooding. All of these are indicators that um, there will be full scarcity and hunger in, in, the, ne in, the, next, in the next few, uh, few months. But then, uh, we should, as a people and as a government, be a bit more proactive in dealing with these this concerns. And then, uh, Obi, uh, thank you for your time with us on the show. We, we're really hoping we have more time. But we'll still have this conversation. We need to eradicate poverty. I'm sure that's part of the, the aim of, um, of highlighting lighting these challenges around poverty, uh, the need to eradicate poverty from our society uh, completely. Thank you always for your time, um, NLB. Thank you. Thank you. We can do more. We sure can do more. All right, we'll go on this quick break. When we come back, um, the show will continue. Don't go away. It's still News Up Monday.